Okay, Shalom, Shalom. Kwam Yasa Allah, Koholoyim Allah, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Sai, Baha Shemra Kahakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders, the great millstone who rule well, Yabada Spirit, taught us this beautiful truth, and just want to say the water to all the Akiyam and Akwaf that's out here, sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Sai to the best of their ability. Jah Hanan Nawaf just coming at you with another quick lesson, praying that it's edifying out of spirit. And, um, yeah, pray that you're having a um, Yapa Shabbat to uh, happy Sabbath to you. I know over over my end, uh, where I'm at, got a few more hours, but the Shabbat is um, Thursday sundown to Friday sundown this month um, for the new moon. So that's what it is for this month, man. So keep we'll keep you posted, um, you know, when the next one comes in. But I wanted to touch on some precepts um, from Proverbs 4 and 4. Let me get that real quick. It says, he taught me also. And said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. Now that word retain is very important. Let's get, um, matter of fact, let's do a Google search on it. We can go off into it and see what it's um, in the Hebrew too. Uh, continue to have something. Keep possession of. So you're to keep possession of this, of this word. You're to keep possession of what's being taught here. You see what I'm saying? So let's go, um, let's get it again. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Now we know that the scriptures talks about man doesn't live by bread alone. Matter of fact, let's see um, how Yahweh Shah said it. When um, Satan was trying to tempt him. Matthew 4 and 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh. See that? That's very important. You know, that's why we pray our, um, you know, the Lord's Prayer, our daily bread. You know, um, help, you know, asking Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai to give us the things that we need to be content. You know, our food, our water, our clothing, just the basic things, you know what I'm saying? Because, of course, this is not our rest, all right? So let's go back off into it again. Let's get this word in the Hebrew. Because this is something that I pray for when I be studying. You know, um, how will help me to retain what it is that I'm reading. You don't want to just be sitting down and you're just reading and you're not, you know, you're not keeping it. Okay, the Hebrew word is tamak. H8551. It's actually in a phrase. It says to grasp, hold, support, attain. Lay hold of, hold fast. See? Let's see here. To mock, a primitive root to sustain by implication, to obtain, keep fast, figuratively to help, follow close. That's a good one too. Take up, hold up, maintain, retain, stay up. So you pretty much have it right there, man. We're to hold on to this thing as a, as a prized possession. You know? So you want to hold on to it like... I mean, I can't, it's nothing out here that I can, I, I, I can really say, hold on to this like, you know, but let's just use for an example. Um, if you have a, a special jewel, you know, someone or, or, you know, here in America, if a man give a woman a, a, a nice diamond ring or something like that in marriage or whatever, she's, she's going to hold on to that boy. It's on her finger. She's not allowing it to go nowhere. Matter of fact, the script, the scriptures talks about binding. Let me see. Binding, um, let me just get it. Let's see how it's worth. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's Proverbs 6. Let's see here. It's a lock here. You know, be, be, be moving in the spirit, man. It be coming. Yeah, for, let's get verse 20. Proverbs 6 and 20. My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them. Continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. See, that's going off into not losing it. Not it's, it's it's on you. So no matter how you're 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 moving, even if you're running, it shouldn't come off of you. Even if you're you stumble, it shouldn't come off of you. You jumping fences, it shouldn't come off of you. Why? Because it's bound to you. You know, it's 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 it's, it's wrapped around your finger. It's wrapped around your neck. It's tied around your neck. You know, that's why the scriptures goes off into, um, what's that, um, all these things are just coming to mind. What's it, frontlets? Uh, 
I might be on print. Uh, I don't have all the letters in Salakia. Well, yeah, Exodus. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 6 as well. And Deuteronomy chapter 11. Let's get all of them. Exodus 13 and 16. And it shall be for a token. Matter of fact, I want to get some more of it though. This, uh, okay, this is going off into the firstborn. It's going on, on the uh, all that open at the matrix being males. Okay, well, let's see what um, Deuteronomy 6. Start at verse uh, five, 4. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our God is one, is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord, Yahweh thy God, with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words, see, and these words, verse 6. Which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them, there you go, for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. See that? So these are things that you want to basically, you want it to be bound to you. Matter of fact, the scripture talks about um, it being like your sister or your kinsman. I know all these scriptures keep popping up. I'm, I'm just going to get them as they come. Uh, I think it's kinswoman. Yeah, Proverbs 7 and 4. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thine kinswoman. See that? Let's get some more. Let's see what else is on there. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's get it. Verse five, it says that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger with flatter with her words. And that's going off into a lot of these different um, philosophies. And, and Esau Edom, the so-called white man's way of living. He's telling you that, you know, you can be whatever you want to be in this place. No, we're supposed to listen to the Lord. You see what I'm saying? That strange woman is that one that's like, psst, psst, come here, let me, you know, let me holler at you. Trying to, you know, put, you know, put, put, you know, push game on you, so to speak, you know, so you want to stay into this truth, man, best you can. Because matter of fact, let's get this real quick. It's lucky I've been waiting on that video to upload forever. <laughs> uh, let's go into this Isaiah real quick. 33. In verse six, and it reads and wisdom and knowledge. Shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. So this wisdom and his knowledge, you want to retain it so that when hard shit come along, you got something that you could, you know what I'm saying? You can go, you know, that's why the scriptures talks about um, treasures in heaven, putting up treasures in heaven, you know, like a spiritual bank account, so to speak. So when you need, you can go to the ATM of, of heaven. And, and, and pull, <laughs> you know, I'm just using that analogy, but you could pull that scripture. You could pull, you know, the Holy Spirit is going to bring something back to your remembrance. They can't pull something back to your remembrance that you never looked into. You know, that's why the scripture talks about um, blesses the man that read. Because these days and times that's about to happen during Jacob's trouble and the tribulations that we're going to go through, we're going to need this. This is going to separate us from, you know, um. The weak and the strong, basically. You know, you're going to be strong if you have this. But if not, you're going to be weak. And check out how people, you can check out the news. You can see how your family members get down. Just check out your family members and your friends and people that's just around you and just see how they react to certain things as opposed to how you react because you're into this truth and, you you know, you, 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 you're exercising temperance. You're exercising patience. You're exercising things that the scriptures talks about, fruits of the spirit. The average person, man, if they're not exercising that, man, they are, they fucking loose cannon, man. Okay, but anyway, let's go back into Proverbs 4 and 4, how this thing all started off. Where, like I said, I was grabbing precepts on that. And it reads, he taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. See, 
You want to keep those commandments so you can live. How do you keep the command? You have to retain them. You want to hold fast to them. You want to hold on to them. So now let's get a precept. Let's see. Let's go into 2 Chronicles 34. And this is um, King Josiah. You know, he was only eight years old. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. And he reigned in Jerusalem one in 30 years. Verse 2 is the point. And he did that which was right in the sight of Yahweh. And walked in the ways of David his father and declined neither to the right hand nor to the left. See? So we're not to turn away. You don't want to be a backslider. You don't want to turn back. You, you know, scripture talks about um remember Lot's wife. You don't want to turn back. And, and if you're into this true, and the scripture talks about um turning back from the plow, like you don't want to turn back. After you if you're doing this work, continue on straight ahead and doing this work, man. Don't turn away from the plow and give up. And now all of a sudden you just back out here in the, in the streets and in the world, man. Pray to Yahweh, you know, for um, that he would not blow out your candlestick, remove his Holy Spirit from you. If you're feeling faint, man, you know, you may have to fast. And but you're supposed to be praying on a day to day basis for those things anyway. So let's get another precept. Job 23. In verse 11. Mm. Let me start at verse 10 here. It says, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. And I mean, that's the chastening of Yahweh about Shema It says, blessed is the man that the Lord chasteneth. You know, because you don't want to be a bastard. Because the Lord, if he considers you to be a son, you're going to go through some things. Because, you know... I like the, the brother down in Birmingham, GMS, I heard him say one time, you know, he kind of gave an illustration of a washer. And, you know, a washer, it agitates the clothes to keep get them clean. So as it's agitating, you know, it's banging through that water, that agitation of that water, it brings the clothes out clean. So that's pretty much what, what we're going through as well. You know, the Lord is, you know, agitating us, so to speak, you know, and putting us through that furnace and, and, and bringing off all those impurities. And, you know, it's going to come out the way that he wants it to come out, you know, pure and solid, you know. Um, verse 11, it says, my foot, my foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not decline. See, and that's what you want to be doing. You want to, you know, um, not decline, man, from his, you know, from from his way. You want to keep moving in, his, in, in, in the direction of the of the scriptures, man. So now let's get another one. Let's get Psalms. Not gonna be a long lesson. I only got like two more precepts. Um Yahweh Psalms 44 and 18. And it reads, um Let me start at 17. Uh yeah, let me just Get to the point here. Let me. I'm gonna start at verse 17. Now, all this has come upon us, yet have we not forgotten thee, neither have we dealt falsely in thy covenant. Our heart is not turned back, neither have our steps declined from thy way. See that? There goes that word decline again. You know, you you don't want to decline from the way of the Lord. What does that de decline means? It means to basically step away or to um, you know subtract or to fall back fall away you don't want to do that you want to be you know on the incline you want to be continue on moving moving ahead man in this thing man you're supposed to be growing and you know pray for growth you don't want to be just stagnant you don't want to just stay in the same place you know as you did this is supposed to be a growing thing right so now let's get the last precepts here i want to go into also the book of psalms chapter 119 get verse 51 and 57 Verse 51, it reads. Oh, yeah, verse 52. Let me start, let me get verse 50 as well. This is my comfort and my affliction. For thy word hath quickened me. See, it's this word that's going to keep you on point. That's why it's so important to read, man. That's why, you know, the scripture says, blessed is the man that read. You have to read. Because this word is alive. It quickeneth you, you know. You can be... And, and feeling bold as hell, man, and sit down and read the scriptures, man, and you'll you'll get up with with juvenation. 
Verse 51, the proud have had me greatly in derision, yet have I not declined from thy law. See? So there's going to come a point where the proud, which is the so-called white man, Esau, Edom, you know, because he know that he had but a short time. He's going to have our people during Jacob's trouble in great derision. But what's going to keep you is going to be Yahweh's word. Yet have I not declined from thy law. You see? Because that's going to be the, the real test of things. It's going to, you know, right now when you're not going through anything, of course, it's easy to say, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But when things get rough, say, for instance, um, you know, um, this this MOTB, this Mark of the Beauty and the Beast, Revelation 13, 16. See, right now you can say, oh, I ain't doing nothing like that. I would never let them do nothing like that to me. I would never let them inject me or implant anything into my body. You know what I'm saying? Because you got food in the house. You got food in the pantries. You got food in the refrigerator. You can go in there. You can throw some in the microwave. You can throw some on the stove. Hell, you can even fire up a grill in your backyard. If you got one, you can go to the store. You can go to a drive through real quick. But when your, your damn belly is, is, is um, rumbling and the kid's belly is, is rumbling, then what are you going to do? Are you going to, you know, decline, you know, decline not from the word of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai? You're supposed to be able to, you know, go back into this word. Because like I said again, you know, Isaiah 33 and 60 talks about this will be the stability of our times. It's wisdom and knowledge. That's what you want to be able to do. Right. So let's get verse 57. I could have kept on just reading on through it, really. But yeah, let me get um verse almost verse fifty six. This I had because I verse fifty five. Let me get there. I have trimp. I have trembled. No, Salakia. I have remembered thy name. That's gonna be important too. Oh Yahweh, in the night and have kept thy law. See, you got groups that's out here like you know we don't know the real name of the the Lord, but by faith we know his name to be Yahweh, which means that he exists or the existing one. And by faith, we believe that his son's name is Yahawashai, which means that he's the savior or deliverer in Paleo-Hebrew. Why? Because there's a lot of clues to it. First off, there's no letter J in Hebrew. That's something that we know for a fact. That's You can Google that. We know there's no letter E, no letter O, no letter U, no letter V in Hebrew. We know that the letter J was invented in 1524, 500 years ago. So we know for a fact that they wasn't calling our father Jehovah and our, 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 our savior Jesus. So you can you can go ahead and um, you know do a deduction and know for a fact that they, <laughs> those are not the names of the father and son. But when you go into the the Paleo Hebrew and and you and you look it up, I mean it, it, you can search it. It's nothing to do. And by faith, we believe that our father's name is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahawasai. And those names are going to be very important to call on when these times and troubles come along. You see, it's not enough to just know the word. You have to, you know, know who actually said it <laughs> for real, you know, because the scripture talks about what the word of a king is. Uh, let me see. It's like I can come back to this. I should have put in. Yeah. Uh, Ecclesiastes eight and four. It says where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? And But you will have to know that king's name. You know what I'm saying? If you you run it, you can't just be like, oh, well, the king said this. And you just, well, what king if there's multiple so-called kings around? Because you have with the so-called white man, he's calling, you know, calling on Jesus. And he's calling on all these different names. And you got um, Elam, you know, the, the so-called uh, um, um, East Indians. They got their gods. You got China. They're calling on their gods and all this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, <laughs> when it straight comes down to it, it says where the word of a king is. And what are we going into right now? We're going into the words. We're going into the law. We're going off into the commandments. That's the, That was the basis of this, this particular lesson, retaining the word. Whose word do you want to retain? You want to know the true name of that king. You want to have that, that, that ring stamp. You want to have that stamp of approval. You see what I'm saying? So let's go back. 56 again this had I this I had because I kept thy precepts thou art my portion O Yahweh I have said that I will keep thy words see I entreated thy favor with my whole heart be merciful unto me according to thy word I thought on thy ways I thought on my ways 
and turn my feet unto thy testimony. See that? I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten my law. So it's, this is what it's all bubbling down to, man. You know? So I didn't want to keep the lesson longer. You know, it was just um, I seen that and went off into the precepts on it. And then, you know, more precepts, of course, just popped up, you know, by the spirit. You know, because hey, we like to flow in the spirit, man. That's the, be the best way to get learning. It's to move in the spirit. The best way to, to be taught, because we're teaching ourselves. We, hey, I didn't write a lot of those precepts down. They just, they come into mind. So I'm, I'm being taught myself. And I'm praying that you were edified as well. So with that, I pray that the lesson was edifying. Come on, Shala.